Greetings everybody, David here, and I am going to go over a short game for you uh, to help you memorize it. Uh, in general, it's easier to memorize a game if you understand the game and what the moves are trying to do and how they play into each other, etc. So, um, you know, you're welcome to try and memorize any of these games just by playing through the move list if that works for you. But uh, we are providing these videos to help explain them, which may make it easier for you. Uh, this game here is a game played by Greco against uh, my favorite, one of my top couple favorite chess players of all time, NN. Um, and this game here is going to illustrate how bad a move F3 and F6 can be in chess. Uh, you may already be familiar with yield F3, G4, Queen H4, Fool's Mate, a pretty good example of how bad F3 can be. And today I'm going to show you another example of it, but we're going to start with one good move for each side before we get into uh, the mayhem of a bad F6 move. So we've got double king pawn. White develops the knight to F3, attacking the pawn on E5. Now, it's a perfectly good idea for black to defend this pawn, but... Uh, it's also very important to play moves that you want to play, moves that are good and healthy for your position, moves that bring out your pieces or put your pieces on good square or create ways to bring out your pieces. Um, and so, like, if you wanted to defend this pawn with a pawn, you'll notice that d6 blocks one bishop and lets one bishop out. Is that good or bad? Oh, it's so hard to tell. Chess is complicated. In this game, black plays f6. This blocks in the queen, blocks in the night, there's nothing complicated about how bad this move is. You don't need any special knowledge. You don't need to consult with 10 different experts and gather their opinions and discuss with them. You don't have to know how to beat the move F6 to know that this is a bad move. You can just see this move and know it is bad. It worsens two of your pieces. It doesn't improve any of your pieces. And to some extent, it opens up this dangerous diagonal for the king a little bit. It opens up this diagonal around the king. So this move is flat out terrible. Strongly recommend you do not repeat it. Um, and here is what Greco played against f6 when playing against nn. It's not the only good move for white here. Um, f6 was so bad that most moves for white look pretty good now. Um, but white plays knight takes e5 sacrificing the knight in order to threaten queen h5 check. And this, in fact, proves and turns out that f6 didn't even do one thing right because black can't capture the knight here, although nn's about to try. But um, can't in the sense that taking the knight is very, very disastrously bad for black. So the only thing that you could have said about f6 being good right? When I said it blocked your pieces, it didn't bring out new pieces, it weakened your king. You could have said, but I mean, a pawn is a pawn. We should defend our pawn. And I would say to some extent, yes. And you know, if that were the only way to defend the pawn, then maybe it would be controversial. Like, should you sacrifice your pawn or sacrifice your position? But here, f6 does not even protect the pawn. White can and does capture the pawn anyway with the knight. Now, black should not take the knight, should let it escape um, and continue on with their bad position. But black did take the knight and white plays queen h5 check. Of course, that was the idea of white's knight sacrifice was to be able to bring in the queen next. And you'll see that black's got very limited options against this check. There are two legal moves. You can block with the pawn or you can bring up the king. In this game, black brings up the king. Um... The alternative to bring up the pawn, white would show their idea with queen e5 check, and they win back a rook, as well as one or two pawns they've captured for the knight that they sacrificed. So white will come out ahead, but not be able to checkmate black, um, since black can coordinate the queen, bishop, and knight next right here. Okay, so g6 would be somewhat of an improvement, but the position is still winning for white. Black played king e7, white took the pawn, queen e5 check. Now here, you can see the queen. Normally, a single queen can't do very much. But here, actually, I mean, it's kind of an awkward placement for the black king. No piece can get in front to block. It's got very limited places to go. Almost checkmated by the sole queen. 
has to go to f7. That's the only legal square. Now, of course, white can't really get any further with just the queen. And white doesn't have a lot of pieces ready, but this one is just good enough. Bishop check. And you see the king is still mostly cut off by the queen. So again, you can find there's only two legal moves for black. You can throw away the pawn or you can run with the king. Black ran with the king. Now white uh, uses the support of this pawn to follow up with the queen, checking the king. The king's still almost out of squares. Again, just one place to go. Now there's a sneaky, sneaky check available here for white. It's by far the best move. It's absolutely crushing if you can find it. Does anybody see a sneaky check? The bishop on c1 checks from behind that pawn that gets out of the way. So now white adds another piece to the attack, right? We added the bishop. Now we added the second bishop. And the king is actually at the end of the road as far as places to go, right? I mean, he wants to go to i6 here. He wants to step off the side of the board, but he can't. So uh, you can block with the pawn or the queen. Black blocks with the pawn. And white's going to add two more pieces to the attack here. <laughs> so an interesting thing about this attack from white is it starts off with basically no pieces, right? Just one queen checking the king. The only reason this attack succeeds is because white's able to continually bring in new pieces with checks or with threats without giving black time to bring out defenders. This attack would not have been successful with just the queen. So here's a very, very beautiful move. You guys should remember this idea that this is going to bring the rook into the attack and the pawn. The pawn counts as an attacker too once it gets this near the king. Um, and an important point is black can't avoid this pawn coming further forward and the rook getting into the attack because this pawn is not allowed to move. So this h4 move is so effective because you're attacking something that can't move. That means you're going to be able to forcibly bring the pawn even closer to the king and forcibly get out of the way of the rook. And now white has just an insane number of pieces attacking this one poor king, right? I mean, we've got queen, bishop, bishop. These two pawns are close enough to help and this rook is in on it too now. And this king is being sheltered by what? One single pawn? <laughs> One little pawn to hold off the flood? It reminds me of Wiley e. Coyote with the little umbrella when an avalanche is coming down on his head. But let me just mention one thing. White couldn't deli deliver checkmate yet in this position. It's important to note. The queen's defended by the bishop. The king is trapped. But this queen was covering that square from a distance. So that will be the end of your checkmating attack if you gave up your queen like that by accident. So in the game, Greco plays h4, adding the rook and pawn. Black has no real defense, tries to run away with the king. This is the hardest move in the game to remember. So notice this one. Black tries to run away with the king. Um, and white herds the king right back to h6. The queen comes in like in Scholar's Mate. And, you know, she's cutting the king off pretty good. Uh, it's important that she's defended. King has to step back on h6. And after pawn takes pawn, Greco has checkmated black. Uh, the rook's attacking here. The queen's got the king stuck like this. King can't come take the pawn on g5 because of the bishop on c1. So that's a final checkmate. Let's go through the moves one more time. Double king pawn. The terrible f6, double question mark on move two. Absolutely atrocious. Um, probably the worst move in the position. Actually, I remember analyzing this position once and finding that in this position, g5 was even worse than f6. I was curious. These moves are always, almost always in, comp in competition for being like the worst moves possible. And then, of course... My brother once had somebody play this move against him in a tournament. This move's very, very bad as well because of knight takes queen. Dreams of scholars mate, which are not to be. Um, but anyway, f6 is one of the couple worst moves in this position. Um, and Greco took on e5 anyway because f6 doesn't stop that. And we're going for this queen h5 attack. Uh, and then took. Greco brought the queen for the attack. Um, NN decided to get checkmated rather than losing a rook today. That's what NN chose in this game. 
And, you know, if they'd lost the Rook, it wouldn't have been such a short game harder for you to memorize. So you can remember, as you're trying to memorize, that Black brought the King up, White was able to take it, chase the King, bring out of the Bishop with check. Check. Always looking for these checks, right? Now the Bishop on C1 says hello. Black blocks with the Pawn. Now White's going to bring in the Rook and the H Pawn with H4. The King tries to get away. There's no way to defend him against this move here, which is going to be a, a double check. So he tries to get away. White herds him back and checkmates black. Okay. One more point that's useful to know about this game is that in this position, black has a better defense than king g6. I mean, black. There's black's position isn't good. <laughs> They're getting destroyed. White's winning. But it's still a useful defensive technique to know, in my opinion is d5. Now, it looks like white can just capture the pawn with any piece that they want to, and they're getting a free pawn. But the point is, you know, black's past the point of worrying about their pawns. Black's getting checkmated. What this move does is it gets out of the way of the queen and bishop. So it provides some extra square control for these two black pieces, which provides a little bit of defense. After bishop takes pawn check, king g6, White wouldn't be able to checkmate black with queen f5, king h6, d4 because the bishop is controlling that square, right? So bishop takes would stop that checkmating attack. And in this position, white still has a winning attack, but it's much trickier to play out because the bishop is actually covering, you know, some squares, including this critical queen f5, and that would make the game tougher and longer. So just a useful technique to know that d5 is good. One way to remember how this game goes is that black almost consistently plays the worst possible move to ensure the shortest possible checkmate. At almost every turn, they play the worst defense, you know? So like white attacks the pawn on f6. What's the worst way to defend it? f6. White takes. What's the worst choice here? It's to accept the sacrifice and let white attack. Um, now black could lose a rook with g6, or they could bring their king out for checkmate. What did they choose? To get mated, of course, right? Now, the black king could run towards its doom, or black could find a brilliant defensive move to prolong the game, of course. We're not going to prolong the game. How would we remember it? The black king runs towards his doom. Occasionally, black has a forced move, you know, because they're in check and they only have one legal move. That happens a few times as well. So then you don't even need to memorize it. You just look what's the legal move, and then you play it d4 check. Here it should be said, since I've insulted black a little bit, that a worse defense would have been queen g5, queen g5 checkmate. So here black plays a good defense, but um, after h4, I don't know what black's best defense would be. I would imagine it would be covering the f7 square with the queen uh, to slow down this checkmate on f7. It doesn't really change much of anything for black since it loses the queen, but but what black chooses to do is to try and run away with the king, get chased right back, and checkmated in the minimum number of moves. Um, so that is Greco versus NN. Greco did beat NN many times, so you can remember this game as F6. Huh? That's all for today. Hope you're enjoying your chess training and uh, enjoying your games, enjoying your study. Catch you next time.